For more on this story, we can bring in William Lawrence, Professor of Political Science and International Affairs at the American University. Uh, thank you very much for joining us here on France 24. Now, yesterday, France lost its 53rd soldier in the region in the past nine years. In your opinion, how successful has Operation Barkhane been, considering the jihadist threat continues today? Well, like its predecessor, Operation Serval, it's been successful in terms of the narrow definition of keeping jihadism to some degree under control. And if you look at, for example, how many jihadists have been lost versus how many French soldiers have been lost, it's not even in, in the same ballpark. It's, 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 it's 10 times, 20 times as much uh, in terms of the lethality of, of, of the ability to eliminate jihadists and get things under control. And notably, last September, the leader of one of the main some insurgencies was killed by French troops. You also have a UN mission alongside the French mission of over 60 countries and 15,000 troops, which has had some success. But all of this is not enough because the approach is not addressing the root causes of terrorism. And when Malian forces in particular, but also some other forces in Mali, go too far in, uh, uh, in violating human rights and killing civilians and perhaps inadvertently at times, that creates more terrorism. And uh, Mali, the Malian government, France, and the international community have not done a very job of addressing the root causes, which is why many people say the operation needs to be abandoned or, or radically changed because this, uh, this, this, uh, this uh, terrorism uh, um, uh, threat continues to grow in some areas, including, as you saw in Burkina Faso. And increasingly, the problems of the two countries are interlinked. Okay, so, so the root causes, in your opinion, of terrorism have not been addressed by the Bakan mission. I want to talk about relations between Paris and Bamako, which have soured over the past year. Anti-French sentiment is rife in the country. Uh, and Mali's proximity to, to Russia uh, ha has grown uh, in the past year. What is it about relations between uh, Russia and Mali that are ruffling feathers here in Paris, in your opinion? Well, there's many aspects to this, but uh, certainly the, the commercial interest of Russia across Africa and its uh, interest in the same minerals and, and other uh, resources available in Mali is of concern to French companies and the French government. Uh, the, the Russian government does not have a lot of bandwidth in Africa. They're never paying attention to more than five or six countries at a time, as opposed to France, which has strong relationships with maybe 30 countries and historical ties. Uh, but uh, but the, uh, certainly bringing in the Wagner mercenaries, the same guys who are in Donbass in Ukraine right now or Syria or Libya and not doing well in terms of addressing the root causes of terrorism and not doing well in terms of, um, of uh, human rights violations uh, makes the problem worse, makes it worse in Mali and increases the chance Francis to come back later with you know, Operation Cervel Barakan 3.0 because the Wagner troops won't be able to control things. In fact, they'll make it worse rather than better because they're even more short-termist and even more military-oriented than the current operation. Uh, so it's not a solution for France. It's not a solution for Mali. And the ultimate solution is to do counterterrorism better in a holistic way that addresses the root causes. Okay, because the, the, the Wagner group uh, are unlikely to address the, the root causes of terrorism as well. And now in the aftermath of the soldier's death on Saturday evening, we had French President Emmanuel Macron who reaffirmed France's commitment to fighting terrorism uh, in the Sahel. Given that relations between France and Mali have soured over the past year, um, will France's presence be accepted in the country for much longer or can we expect uh, and can we expect more such attacks to take place on military bases in the country? It's probably not a fair comparison, but it's a little bit like the American presence in Iraq and Syria in that everybody wants them out, except that they don't want them out because they're uh, the most effective in fighting terrorism, uh, certainly better than the Malian forces and the U.N. forces. Uh, and and uh, in, in Mali in particular, if you look at polling data, southern Malians, who are much less affected by the violence, are much more likely uh, to want the French out on the basis of conspiracy theories and, and French interests, right, France-Afrique, this idea that France has sort of ulterior motives and, 
and, and shadow motives, and they want the French out for sort of anti-neo-colonial reasons. Whereas you, if you look at polling in the north of Mali and in the east of Mali, where they are affected by terrorism, they much more want the French to stay because the French are the most effective in terms of you know cooperating with the Malians and on their own missions with a lot of United States support in terms of intelligence and, and refueling and evacuation of injured soldiers, et cetera, uh, than, than the Malian forces on their own. So I suspect that same double game will be played. You know, we want the French out, except that we don't really want them out. Uh, that'll continue uh, well into the future. And Macron's been sort of playing into that. You know, last June, he said the French are out. Then he said in July, they're back in. They're out in the first quarter of 2022. No, they're staying till 2023 in the summer. Uh, we're closing three bases, but we're leaving three open permanently. So, so the French messaging has a little bit been all over the map, and it tracks with whether things are going well between Paris and Bamako or not. Interesting. Thank you very much, uh, William Lawrence, for joining us.